I want to thank DPI and the State Board, whoever did this, sent my phone number out and said, everybody call Senator Tillman if you don't like this bill. Well, I had about 200 people call me and said they like it. Anyway, thank you for that public free uh, advertising. What this bill simply does, it says we recognize that Math 1, 2, and 3 has some great advantages, and it's a good program, all right? Especially for those that are in the top half or top quartile of students. They do well. The bottom 60% have trouble with the new merged math. There's nothing wrong with merging it. Math principles never change. The way you present it, the way you teach it, and the way you congeal it into this, that, and the other, that's the only difference. One says we're going to combine it and merge it in math one, two, and three. The old way that we've done for 100 or more years is algebra one, geometry, algebra two. Many students who struggle in math can do well with this. All I'm saying is, you got a choice. You got a choice. And if you find something wrong with choice, and I know you'll shoot holes in a few things that I've heard some of you making this excuse and that and the other, but let's give them a choice. I'm talking to teachers and parents that you're evidently not talking to. The ones I'm hearing from say my kids are struggling, they don't understand it, and we can't help them at home. All right? You hadn't heard that, you must have a high-flying student. They're doing well. All I'm saying is, let's give them a choice. Let's see where they flourish. They know that they'll be able to handle either, and we'll give you a year to transition your standard. This is for higher standards. Some of you are famous for putting out that you're lowering standards. No, math principles never change. A good math teacher can teach any of this, folks. It doesn't matter. Those principles are the same whether you merge it or whether you teach it in a sequential manner. And we've all been taught that math is a building block subject area and you have to start the basics and move forward in a sequential manner. I'm just saying that sequential works good for those students. Choice, that's it. Thank you, Senator Tillman. I think one thing that will be helpful for the committee is if staff could walk through this bill, but also help us understand how it's different from the one that was that we discussed before the committee last week. So, staff, you recognize? James Ritter from Legislative Analysis. In Section 1 of the bill, it requires the State Board of Education to revise and reorganize the math standard course of study adopted in June 2016 to allow students and parents choice between the traditional sequence of Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2, or the integrated Math 1, 2, and 3. For students beginning high school math in 2017-2018, LEAs must offer options aligned with the traditional sequence of math. For assessments offered to students in 2017-2018, standards must be supplemented for students enrolling in Algebra 1 to make sure they are successful on the current assessment. In Section 2, it requires the State Board of Education and the State Board of Community Colleges to conduct a comprehensive review of the math standard course of study in grades K-12 that increases rigor, focus, and college readiness, a career readiness. The newly revised standards must be implemented in the 2018-2019 school year. In Section 3 of the bill, it prohibits the use of career and technical education courses to satisfy the fourth math for graduation unless a student has, student has an individualized education program that identifies the student as learning disabled in math and that the student has a learning disability that will prevent the student from mastering Algebra 1. Section 4 requires the State Board of Education and the State Board of Community Colleges to report to the General Assembly and the Joint Leg Legislative Education Oversight Committee by March 15th of 2018 that includes revised standards and notes any changes that have been made to the math standard course of study. Section 5 makes the math standard course of study and sequence options effective June 1st, 2018 unless a bill is introduced in either house of the General Assembly that disapproves the math standard course of study. Um, and of course, the bill will become effective when it becomes law and applies beginning with the 2017-2018 school year and thereafter. Thank you, staff. Uh, the chair would just like to point out for this bill that in the, in the original PCS that we brought up for discussion only, 
uh, the bill replaced the current standards and integrated math with traditional math sequencing and reverted back to the old standards until we could get new ones. This bill is very different. This bill provides, allows those current standards to stay in place. It allows for integrated math to stay in place. What it does is it looks to the future and it directs uh, the State Board of Education to <coughs> re-implement traditional math sequencing in addition to the integrated math under those higher standards, but offering a choice for students to choose whichever math sequence better aligns with their pathway in high school. And so with that, I will, uh, the chair will entertain any questions or discussions on the PCS. Senator Cook. Just so I'm clear, when does this, uh, when does the choice uh, become effective? When, 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 did, when can they choose a more traditional approach to math? Senator Tim, would you like to in answer that or have staff answer? We've given them a year to uh, redo the standards. You want to buff those standards up? I'm all for it. We need to do. We need to take a look at the standards that did apply. 2001 geometry algebra two. Let's increase those standards. Let's make them tougher. And I believe we will have to see that done. So we've given a year of transition. So the fall of uh, 2018, I believe, is the start date on this. And this can be very complicated. Let Let, let, let me add to that. When, when Senator Tillman says redo the standards, what he means is as we phase in the traditional pathway, the State Board of Education is going to have to do new standards for that pathway. He's not talking about redoing standards for the integrated pathway. And that those standards will come live in the 2017-18 school year. And that's two years is what the, uh, uh, what the department asked for to go through that process to have all that they needed to go through that process. Follow up? Follow up, please. Hello. I'm a little disappointed. I've been trying to get rid of Common Core for four years now. And, uh, We're still not there. I wrote that bill, Senator Cook. We're transitioning. It's hard and slow when you're working with the government. Senator Cook, I would say what we learned from how we got into Common Core is that our children should not be a social experiment. And the shock and awe that our public school system was put through by the flipping of the switch of changing every standard in the state of North Carolina was wrong. And so what this bill attempts to do is move in a more thoughtful way to providing pathways for students to have choice to receive the type of education they need that will best help them succeed. Senator Berenger? Uh, at the appropriate time, I'd like to move to amend the uh, PCS, please. Now is an appropriate time. You can uh, send forth your amendment. Uh, thank you. It, uh, the staff has it, and it should be before all the members. Are, do all the members have the amendment numbered ATC 162, version 1? Okay, Senator Berenger, you're recognized to explain your amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, what this amendment does, and I'll just read from the amendment, uh, what this does is it says that if a student has an IEP, an individual education plan that identifies that the student has a, is learning disabled in the area of Algebra 1, that the student shall be allowed to construct a four-course mathematics sequence that includes one or more career and technical education courses as appropriate based on the student's individual education plans and post-secondary goals. Uh, my comment to this, uh, uh, or my argument for this, is that I do not want the changes that we are implementing or potentially implementing today to impede someone being able to get a, a high school diploma as they can now. There are many students who can learn math, but they need to do it in a tangible way, not, uh, not, not in, in an abstract way. They would do so in classes where they're building something, touching something, feeling something, and actually applying the math to that. And so that's why I bring forth this amendment and ask for your support. Senator Berenger, I think your amendment reinforces the philosophy of this bill, and that is that no. students learn differently in different ways, but we all want higher standards. Is there any objection to the amendment? The amendment before you, uh, if you're in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Uh, in my opinion, the, the ayes have it. The amendment passes. And next, I'll recognize Senator Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just had a question as to why 
when we're, we're changing to go back to something or at least offer the choice of going back, has there been any kind of study on whether this, why this is needed? I mean, I understand that some people called the office or something. That I do not profess to be a math expert by any means, but I kind of doubt that most of us in the legislature are math experts. And it would seem to me that it, we ought, this ought to be something that we have some basis in, of study in that it actually is needed. Sir, tell me. Senator Smith, if we weren't giving you a choice, I would say yes, amen to that, but we do. <coughs> you take which one you want. But math principles do not change. That's the reason the transition will not be that hard, regardless of what you may hear from uh, those in the ivory tower. A good math teacher can teach it either way. And some of them have been merging this and teaching both already for the last four years. Many of them have had to adapt and not get into one, two, and three as quickly as they thought. So that, that won't be a hard problem at all. We're given a choice. Follow up, Mr. Chairman. Follow up. Um, and I'm just wondering whether giving that choice, is that make it a little more complicated for the schools to be able to, and the teachers to be able to, are, are, are teachers going to have to teach two different kinds of math? Not Even possibly in this, well, I understand that, but two different ways of, of doing it. Uh, it just seems like that might be a little bit complicated. Just to, just to provide some historical perspective, when the Common Core Standards came out, states had the ability to choose whether they wanted to deliver math uh, traditionally or through integration. North Carolina was one of the first and only at the time states that decided to change all of their math to fully integrated math. What, what you've seen in a lot of states, to give you an example towards the study piece, is a lot of states that went into full integration, like North Carolina did, have started to pull back from that and, uh, and approach it in more of a hybrid way, recognizing that integrated math meets the needs and challenges of a lot of students, but in many ways is very complicated for a, a, whole, a whole other section. And I'll give you an easy example. I have a high school in my district that had a very successful CTE program where the math department would align the traditional sequencing of math delivery with CTE classes. For example, aligning a geometry math class with a drafting class. Under integrated math, they don't have the ability to, to do that anymore. The other thing that Common Core, if you support Common Core, Common Core says that you can deliver traditional and integrated math, that it doesn't lower the standards. The standards are the standards and how you deliver it is totally up to the state. And so what this bill is proposing is that our students have an option of how they receive it. Senator Craver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've heard some concerns that um, the ACT and SAT are now geared toward the new integrated math. Um, Senator Tillman, can you tell us how that's going to affect those students that are in transition? Do you think that it will be a have an impact on them? Statistics show that uh, there's a little higher level of achievement in test scores in the SAT and ACT with students that are in the integrated math, and that simply can be explained by many of those students or your higher level students that are taking those tests that are in those courses. I don't think it'll make uh, any difference at all. Math is still math. Now, there's some of them that will tell you that that makes a big difference. I would beg to differ. I don't think so. Thank you. We currently don't meet any of our benchmarks for the ACT under the integrated math. <coughs> Senator Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a few questions regarding this. Um, first is, Senator Tillman, and you've explained this is an option, but even with that option, and you know how I think about boards, we appoint a state board of education with authority to make decisions because they have educators, and I always question us making those decisions uh, beyond the policy and the governance. So the first question is if this is, and it does say require local boards to offer the option. So if local boards are required to offer the option, that means that they have to do professional development of teachers to be able to make the transition because they've got to do the standard course and then they've got to do the, you know, they've got to do the sequence in the different way. 
also recruit math teachers. And we currently don't have enough teachers in math in the state as it is. So how are we going to support them in terms of the additional costs, in terms of the recruitment, and in terms of professional development? How are we as a General Assembly going to do that for our LEAs? We do it all the time, sir. <laughs> we do it all the time. In-service development is a continuing thing. And if you can teach math, your same certifications are required, same students, same allotment of teachers. That's not going to change. Uh, follow up, Ms. Chair. Follow up. Are we going to appropriate additional funding to for this or the incoming year so that they can do the professional development for those teachers and maybe find some more math teachers? Math isn't an easy thing to teach. We're finding math teachers now where we can, and that we will look for the same number of teachers. This does not change. Your allotment does not change, so we're still looking for good math teachers. Certification does not change, so the problem is already there. One more follow-up, Ms. Follow-up. I have a concern, too, about the graduation requirements because I know, as you know, that if you give students the choice to choose, and there are not parents involved. And for a lot of our kids, I heard your stats that you that you read, even for the charters in terms of African American kids. Some kids are from low income neighborhoods. Parents don't have the ability to get to schools to be involved in making those choices. And high school is a very critical time, middle and high school. So if the student makes the choice as opposed to having that parent there, some may choose the alternative, the option, and may not be prepared for higher education. So my question is, have you, you know, how is that going to impact graduation requirements in terms of going on to two and four year colleges? Have we looked at that? Have we studied that? No, ma'am, no, there's no change. There's no change in that. The parent and student always selects their schedule with the advice of their guidance counselor. They'll do the same thing they've always done. There's no change. I think one thing that's important to point out is we have a lot of students coming to the state of North Carolina from other states that do not do integrated math. So when they transition into our school system, they go through a nightmare process of trying to find out where they're at in the system. This bill will allow those students who are headed to college to continue on the track uh, that they came here with and not have to tussle with or spend wasted time in the classroom dealing with standards um, that are aligned to a math delivery system that doesn't exist in other states. And I would also remind this committee that $70 million that was supposed to be appropriated to our teachers in North Carolina for the rollout of integrated math never hit the classroom. So you have many teachers across the state of North Carolina who are delivering integrated math who are just one chapter ahead of their students. In many ways, some of them being able to deliver it in the traditional way will be able to go back to a way where they were professionally developed uh, to achieve those things. We flipped the light switch in North Carolina and turned math into a dark place and now we're trying to bring some light back in. Um, I'm looking at our clock. I'm going to take two more questions from the committee and then I have a motion on the table. We do, we will hear a uh, very short public comment on this. Uh, Senator Woodard, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess I'm trying to follow on to Senator Robinson's question about the practical <coughs> applications of this choice option that's now been introduced into the bill. What does that mean for an individual high school that's got to offer essentially two tracks of math? How do we track the enrollment? How does a principal staff his, his or her math department? Uh, can you give me some insight into that? Because it seems to me you're creating some more costs. And if we are, I'd like to know what those costs are. Mr. Chairman, there, there's no cost. You got the same number of students. You don't have new students. We're not creating another ADM. We're not changing any allotment. So your number of teachers and your number of students are the very same. What you do is you take the teaching staff you've got and you take the registration of the students and put them into those courses. You may have a teacher, for example, teaching Algebra 1 alongside those in uh, Math 1. You can have that. With a good teacher, you can do it. A quick follow-up, Mr. Chair. Follow-up? Well, I, I, 
I have a challenge that it wouldn't cost because you're splitting things up. But let me get to another question that I would like to hear the sponsor address. And that's the status of the Standard Review Commission, Academic Standard Review Commission. We charge them, task them with bringing us back these standards. Aren't we putting the uh, cart before the horse? We haven't seen what their recommendations are yet, have we? Yes, sir, we have. They weren't one, two, and three, and they weren't anything much. They wanted to recommend the Minnesota standard. They got to play in politics, and we ended up with uh, almost nothing. Just to directly answer your question, this bill does nothing to change that process or the process that the State Board of Education has been through over the past year in developing modifications to the integrated standards. I would also remind Senator, Senator Woodard and the committee that as integrated math was phased in, schools had to teach both traditional and integrated math at the same time to phase those students out. And so it's been done before and they will just phase it right back in. Senator Apodaca? Okay, I've got a uh, motion from Senator Bingham. We will hold it for just one second. I'm gonna uh, hear from, uh, uh, I don't have time to hear from everyone, but we're gonna hear from some people from the public who showed up today. Uh, the way I'm gonna do this is I have a pro and con list. I'm gonna call on two of you from each side, and you have two minutes to speak. Our Sergeant of Arms is gonna uh, let you know when you are uh, cut off. So the first person uh, that we want to recognize is Christina Hoy. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. I'm actually a teacher. I was in a classroom this time last year doing Reader's Theater with fifth, fifth graders before the school ended. I'm not with an organization and I'm self-funded. I'm here to share teacher insight and support in forming policy. I want to thank Senator Tart for coming to my classroom during my government unit and coaching my kids on consensus building, which I hope we can do with integrated math. I am for integrated mathematics. The reason I am is um, one thing you guys as business thinking, forward thinking senators know, that a lot of what the tech leaders are saying is that there's this data horizon. And on, the and on the data horizon is all the information businesses need to get growth. <coughs> so what this one economist told me when I asked him, what am, I, what am I coaching my students towards in math? He said, you need to be able to teach kids to look at a horizon of data, pull data off, integrate it, and put it into a narrative. That's what businesses need to get growth and to be strategic. So integrated mathematics supports businesses. And I also want to say in serving students, so I don't know if you know this, but in the, when I went to school, you had 45 minutes of teacher lecture, and then 15 minutes they would give you the worksheet. And I'm so excited for those 15 minutes to get the worksheet. But today we flipped it. So I don't know if you know, but when I go in front of my students, one, I've already diagnostically pre-assessed them and know what skills they need. So then I'm with them, in front of them for 10 to 15 minutes in a mini lesson, and then I push them out for 45 minutes into strategic data-driven small groups. And then I coach, and I coach, and I coach. This group might be below grade level, so it's skills. This group over here might be above grade level, so it's higher level thinking. This group in the middle might be just on grade level, so I'm doing something with them. But we differentiate in the classroom for kids to help them get growth, and that's actually how you get growth as a teacher. And the last thing I wanna say is, if you saw struggle with the change, here's why. In North Carolina, we did Common Core all at once. On my teacher team, we had teachers from all over the nation who also were doing integrated mathematics, and they said that they, it was implemented much more slower. Thank you, Ms. Hoy. The next person we'd like to call is Julie Shalowski. And when you come to the microphone, if you could just state your name and... Julie Shalowski, and good morning. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of my background. I've taught high school mathematics in Wake County for 39 years. I served as a facilitator at an elementary school to help elementary teachers implement Common Core. I've had adjunct positions at NC State and Meredith teaching math and supervising student teachers. I've won numerous teaching awards, including the Presidential Award. I offer that simply to hopefully get a little credibility to my comments this morning because I have a broad range of experience K through university. Uh, first of all, some of the things that Common Core proponents advocate for are rigor and critical thinking. No one is against that, but those are products of teachers and instructional practice. Rigor means do I challenge my students. It has nothing to do with which curriculum you choose. Critical thinking, 
uh, read where a Common Core teacher said she asked her students what four times negative nine was, and the students said negative 36, and she said, how, how? And he said, well, four times nine is 36, there's a negative, so we say negative 36, and the teacher said we never did that before Common Core. Really? Asking critical questions depends on the teacher. Rigor depends on the teacher. And there is research out there uh, in statistics. Common Core was never vetted. There is, even the authors of Common Core speak to that it is not college ready material. We are not serving our top kids as well as we should be. In Kentucky, which has done Common Core for the longest amount of time, 21% of the students were college ready. 5% of the black students were college ready. That is not serving our students well. I support this house bill. I think giving the option of choice is excellent, but we need to remember that many of the proponents are a result of strong instructional practice and not curriculum. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker I'd like to recognize is Wendy Bartlett. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share with you my thoughts on the high school mathematics curriculum in North Carolina. I've been teaching in Forsyth County at Parkland High School for 19 years, and I've taught both the traditional pathway and the integrated math pathway. I would like to encourage you to offer just one pathway for our students. The newly adopted high school mathematics standards, it is what is best for our children. Many of you had questions about the practical implementation of offering two pathways. I am also department chair of my high school. Unfortunately, I did not know about the changes of the bills before I arrived today, but I would love to discuss with you the large number of challenges this creates for our high schools. However, I'm going to continue with my prepared comments. Although the rolling out of the Common Core standards was challenging and frustrating at times, North Carolina teachers have been working countless hours to make standards unique to North Carolina, not Common Core standards, that prepare our students for 21st century jobs. The standards were obviously created by math teachers and professionals that listened to our feedback. They have improved an already good set of standards and placed them in appropriate sequencing that makes sense for North Carolina students and how they need to learn mathematics. These standards are the best I have seen in 19 years. Students like the integrated math sequence. It gives students the opportunity to master different topics in the course. Not everyone is good at algebra, so many students love the, the statistics unit for its real life applications. Students enjoy the opportunity to master different topics within the course as the school year progresses. Finally, I'm going to put my parent hat on. My daughter is currently a fourth grade, I'm going to get teary eyed. And her public school mathematics education has been phenomenal. Her teachers have embraced our new standards, and her number sense of mathematical problem solving, sorry, very passionate, is impressive thanks to her teachers are delivering mathematics topics in their classrooms. In addition, my ninth grade son just completed Math 1. To interrupt his sequencing at this point, which I know maybe is the bill changing, will create significant holes in his mathematics education. Many people think of integrated math as a piecemeal of different math topics thrown together. It's just not true. Thank you for your time. I implore that you listen to teachers when you make these decisions. Thank you. And for our press folks out there, no one's sequences are going to get interrupted through this bill unless they choose to. Uh, the next person we'd like to recognize is Hope Harrington. Is Hope Harrington here? Just state your name and where you're from. Hi, I'm Hope Harrington. I'm a student at um, Garner Magnet High School. I'm a rising IB senior. And I have a 4.7 GPA. I have taken biochemistry and microbiology at NC State as a sophomore. So I'm a higher level student, as you would call it. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for allowing me to come speak on behalf of students and their perspective on this. Um, so with my past experience, I can also say Common Core has only had negative effects on my education. I learned Common Core methods and I had trouble understanding those methods and so my father could not help me with them and he decided to teach me traditional methods. And when I used those traditional methods, because they made sense on tests, I was penalized um, for the methods I used and I got the correct answer but I was still penalized and you know they say oh you're just unlucky it happened well it shouldn't have happened in the first place and I have had teachers who have taught me 
Common Core and also traditional math ways at both times, and it has gone wonderful. They spend half the class teaching one way, the half the other class say choose your method, and I don't see it as an issue. Um, and Common Core complicates things far past than what they need to be. It takes a two-step problem and turns it into a ten-step problem. Uh, I'm also a tutor for Common Core One or Algebra One, and my student struggles greatly with the methods taught him, and his teacher just didn't get through to him. So I decided to teach him traditional math way, and it worked better for him. And he improved his grade back to from an F to a B. He made an 86 on the final, and it greatly helped him. Therefore, I think it is possible to do traditional and common core math on both scales. Uh, so another issue is learning one method one day, having homework, and then taking that method and having a new um, topic the next day, even if you didn't understand it, which isn't fair because the teacher would say, sorry, we're moving on. So the student should be allowed to pick their way to serve higher level kids like me. Thank you, Hope. Okay, we're well past our time. I have a motion from Senator Stan Bingham. Uh, the motion uh, should be favorable to the proposed committee substitute as amended, rolled into a new proposed committee substitute with a favorable report to the new committee substitute and an unfavorable report to the original bill. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Hello. It appears to the chair that the eyes have it and the bill passes. Thank you. This meeting is great.